We're going to be looking at reflection and refraction, which includes refractive index. So here we have wavefront incident on a surface. So the lines, for example, could be representing the crest of a wave. And so the distance between the lines represents the wavelength. Rays are drawn 90 degrees to the wavefront. So here is the incident ray. So waves incident on a surface can be reflected, that is they can bounce off the surface. To determine the direction of the reflected wave, we need to first draw the normal line, and that is a line that is perpendicular, 90 degrees to the surface. The reflected ray occurs when the angle of reflection, that is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal, is equal to the angle of incidence, that is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. And remember to draw the wave front, they need to be 90 degrees to the rays, so the reflected wave fronts will look like this. A satellite dish has a large surface area in order to collect the signals and the surface is shaped in such a way that all the rays hitting the surface will be reflected onto the receiver. Refraction is when a wave changes direction as it passes from one medium to another. So here we have the incident ray, then it's entering a new medium and it's being refracted. So this is the refracted ray. And here you have the emergent ray, the ray coming out of this medium. And refraction is due to the wave changing its speed in a different medium and that's because the medium has a different density. So light travels slower in a denser medium but mechanical waves for example sound travel faster in a denser medium. So if we consider this wave to be a light wave where it's instant in air and then we have glass which is a denser medium. The light will slow down in glass and when it comes out back into the air the light will speed up because air is less dense. We can see that the light has slowed down in the glass by the fact that the wavelength has decreased. And that's from the equation V equals F lambda. So the light going from air into glass, the frequency of the light remains the same, but its velocity will decrease because glass is a denser medium. So if velocity decrease and frequency remains the same, then that means the wavelength of light in glass will decrease. And that's shown by the space in between the wave fronts has decreased. When the light is traveling from glass into air, then again the frequency remains the same. But the wave speed will increase because air is a less dense medium. So as velocity has increased and frequencies remain the same, then the wavelength must increase. So the spacing between the wavefronts has increased. And it's the same spacing 
as it was for the incident ray. When the speed of the wave decreases, then the wave is refracted towards the normal line. So if we consider this incident ray, if there was no change of medium, it would continue along this dashed blue line. But as it's going into a medium where its wave speed has decreased, the ray is refracted, changes direction, that it is closer, it's moved towards the normal line. When the speed of the wave increases, then the wave is refracted away from the normal line. If we now consider this ray, and if there was no change in medium, it would continue to move along the blue dashed line. But as it's going into a medium where its wave speed has increased, the ray is refracted, that means changes direction, so that it's moved away from the normal line. So a wave refracts due to a change in wave speed, and the greater the change in wave speed, the more the wave refracts. If we want to quantify the refraction of light, we use the term refractive index. A refractive index of a medium is defined as the speed of light in free space, or empty space, or vacuum, divided by the speed of light in the medium. And in symbols, refractive index is n, and c is the speed of light in free space, and v is the speed of light in the medium. Snell's law is a law of refraction at a boundary. And here you have light incident in medium 1 of refractive index ni and it's passing into medium 2 and refracting and medium 2 has a refractive index of nr and Snell's law states that n sine theta equals a constant so the refractive index of the medium multiplied by sine of the angle of the ray of light relative to the normal is equal to a constant. So in this case, for medium 1, the refractive index is Ni and the angle is I, the angle of instance. So Ni sine I equals a constant. And in medium 2, the refractive index of Nr and the angle is r, the angle of refraction. So nr sine r equals a constant. And as both of these equal a constant, they must equal each other. And the refractive index of medium 1 will equal the speed of light in free space divided by the speed of light in medium 1. And the refractive index of medium 2 will equal the speed of light in free space divided by the speed of light in medium 2. And if we substitute for Ni and Nr into this equation, we get sine i divided by sine r equals the refractive index of medium 2 which is C divided by VR, divided by the refractive index of medium 1, which is C divided by VI. The C's cancel, so you're left with 1 divided by VR, all divided by 1 divided by VI, which simplifies to VI divided by VR. We're now going to look at Snell's law when light travels from a medium of low density to a high density. So comparing the speed of light, we know that light slows down in a higher density medium. And so 
the speed of light in the instant medium will be greater than the speed of light in the refractive medium. So the speed of light in the low density medium is going to be greater than the speed of light in the high density medium. And if we look at Snell's law, then if VI is greater than VR, so the top number is bigger than the bottom number, then if we compare the refractive indices of the media, then NR must be greater than NI. And if we compare the angles, then sine I has to be greater than sine R. So the angle of instance must be greater than the angle of refraction. And so that means when light passes from a low density medium to a high density medium, it's refracted towards the normal so that the angle of refraction is less than the angle of instance. If we look at the example of light passing through air into a medium of refractive index N, well, the refractive index of air equals 1 because the speed of light in air is very similar to the speed of light in free space. And as n equals c divided by v, and v for air is approximately equal to c, then the refractive index of air will approximately equal 1. So if we use Snell's law, so for the medium 1, which is air, ni equals 1, and you have sine of the angle of instance, and that will equal 4 medium 2, which is refractive index n, multiplied by sine r. So the refractive index n will equal sine i divided by sine r. If we now look at the case when light passes from a high density medium to a low density medium. Well, light speeds up, so the speed of light in the lower density medium will be greater than the higher density medium. So VI will be less than VR. So the speed of light in high density medium is less than the speed of light in the low density medium. So if we use Snell's law, we can see VI is less than VR. So the top number is less than the bottom number. And so if we compare the refractive indices of the media, then we can say NR is less than NI, or NI is greater than NR. And if we compare the angles, then sine i must be less than sine r. So the angle of instance i has to be less than the angle of refraction r. And so when light travels from a high density medium to a low density medium, it must refract away from the normal so that the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of instance. And if we look at the specific case of light travelling from a medium of refractive index n into air. So then using Snell's law, for the incident medium, it has refractive index n multiplied by the sine of angle of instance. And that will equal for medium 2, the refracted medium, which in this case would be air. For the refractive index of air, we said is approximately equal to 1 multiplied by sine of the angle of refraction. So n sine i will equal sine of r. So the refractive index of the medium in this case will equal sine r divided by sine i.